the exam is only a weeks away and at this point of time instead of going through all the content that you have always been reading it's better to solve more and more questions keeping that in mind i brought to you questions taken from march current affairs of esi which are going to be important not only for phase 1 but also for the phase 2 of nabard examination these questions also hold a lot of importance for the upcoming rbi examination so let's start with the session the first question is electoral bonds have been showcased as an improvement over the previous opaque method of donating to political parties this is a statement that has been given in light of the above statement consider the following and find out the option which goes against the above argument so first of all we need to break down what the above argument is trying to say and then only can we find out which point among these four options goes against the above argument the point that the particular argument is trying to make is that electoral bonds are an improvement electoral bonds are better than the older method of donating to political parties so which of these statements below goes against this argument and says instead that electoral bonds are not better even worse or you know at the same level as the older method let's go through the options both the purchaser of the bond and the political party receiving the money have a right to not disclose the identity of the donor use of bank routes would likely reduce the under the table cash transactions and thus promote transparency transactions through banks would incentivize the use of white money the kyc requirements of banks would ensure paper trails these are the keywords that i have highlighted let's go through the keywords again right to not disclose the identity of the donor that is under electoral bond scheme which means it certainly is trying to say that electoral bonds are in no way better are in no way better than the older method the second point says it reduces under the table cash transactions which means it proves that electoral bonds are better than the older method incentivize the use of white money again electoral bonds are better than the older method and ensure paper trails again electoral bonds are better than the older method so clearly the answer to this question is a if you got it right well done if you got it wrong go through these questions more clearly the answer is hidden in the questions as well as in the answer choices you don't have to have read a lot in order to answer certain questions which are Uh, always presented in the exam and which a lot of students get wrong you just need to read the questions and the options more carefully let's come to the second question which of the following correctly explains care economy in terms of female labor force participation rate now if you don't know about care economy of course it's going to be a little more difficult for you to answer this question but you if you are aware about what care economy is which is which you should be because it was it has been running rounds in, in the newspapers for quite quite some time let's go through the options and find out whether you know about it or not the amount of time spent by women on works like household maid crash etc the amount of time spent by women on doing secretarial work in organizations not utilizing their true potential the amount of time spent by women on household chores in the family the amount of time spent by women on dealing with alcoholic husbands care economy if the name if we go by the name means taking care of your household whatever the work might be and because women are not paid for that work it reduces the female labor force participation rate because it is not counted as women working somewhere or the other women when women work as household maid or work in the crash facility they are paid you know something or the other if your household maid whenever she comes she is paid some of the other amount of money depending upon the work that she is doing so this certainly cannot be the answer but a lot of students i'm sure would get this as the answer because they would pick this up as the keyword and would answer it right away the amount of time spent by women on doing secretarial work in organizations not utilizing their true potential looks close because when you are working as a secretary a lot of times you are taken misleadingly as a part of care economy or taking care of your boss and his work but because you're getting paid for the same it cannot be a part of care economy because you're still a part of 
female labor force participation rate. The amount of time spent by women on household chores in the family looks correct. And the fourth option is the amount of time spent by women on dealing with alcoholic husbands. That is in no way connected with care economy. So certainly is wrong. So the correct answer to this question is C. If you got it right, well done. If you did not, read the question carefully. The answer as I said is hidden in the question and the answer choices. Let's come to the next question. Which of the following are reasons for a high current account deficit in Indian economy? A difficult question. If you know the answer, put it in the comment section below for this particular question because I want to see how many of you can answer questions like this correctly. There are four options, four choices and then there are four more options or five more options. The first one is Indian output is below its potential. When output is below the potential, does it mean that we have or does it mean, uh, does it contribute to high CAD or not? Indian savings are less than investments. When savings are less than investments, does it contribute to high CAD or not? There is unutilized labor capacity. When let's say total labor in the country is 100, but the labor working towards various industries or in various industries is only 50, does it contribute to high CAD or not? India is heavily dependent on oil imports for its energy needs. This is very clear. I mean, I, I believe the easiest option out of these four when you have high imp oil imports, that means you have to pay for those oil imports in terms of foreign exchange. That means CAD increases. So this is certainly a reason, sorry, certainly a reason for high CAD in the economy. So whenever or wherever you have four, you get it right and others can be eliminated. So one and two can be eliminated, one, two and three can be eliminated. So you still have three options left. Let's go through them again. Indian output is below its potential. When output is below the potential, that means that the country might have to borrow from somewhere or let's say more accurately to import from somewhere or the other. Let's say the optimum output to satisfy the demand in the economy for let's say mobile phones is 100 million per year. But Indian manufacturers are able to make only let's say 20 million mobile phones per year. Uh, so the remaining 80 million have to be imported from countries like China, which automatically increases the CAD. So this is a correct option. So wherever you do not have one, you eliminate that. So we are left with only two options, A and D. Second is Indian savings are less than investments and that is where it is tricky. Let's come to the third one. There is unutilized labor capacity. When you have unutilized labor capacity, let's say there are 100 labor force in the country and you are uh, you know putting only put, uh, putting to use only 50 does it contribute to uh, high CAD in the economy no it does not what it contributes to and what the impact of high labor is that high CAD results in unutilized labor capacity in the country because high CAD means imports are more than exports which means if there are less exports, which means that the country is not producing enough output, not producing enough output. When the country is not producing enough output, then certainly the industries are not working at their full potential or let's say new industries are not coming up. That means whatever labor is certain idle in the country is not being utilized. And that is an impact of high CAD in the economy and not a reason. Therefore, three is incorrect. So the correct answer comes out to be D, 1, 2 and 4 are reasons for high CAD whereas the third one, unutilized labor capacity is not a reason, it's an impact of high CAD in the economy. Now let's understand the second one, Indian savings are less than investments. When savings are less than investments, investments cannot be reduced in the economy. What that does is in order to satisfy these investments, let's say uh, the economy as a whole wants to invest $100 million in a particular year, but the savings are only let's say $30 million. How on earth are these people who want to invest $100 million are going to get this money? They are going to borrow from the foreign market. When they borrow from the foreign market, then CAD goes up automatically. So the second option is also a reason for high CAD in the economy. Let's come to the next question. Which of the following is not a negative impact, not a negative impact. So let's find out the negative impacts of disinvestment and then 
we can start eliminating them. Which of the following is not a negative impact of disinvestment program of the government? The first one is disinvestment might result in monopoly like situation in the market. Monopoly like situation in the market, it is a negative impact of disinvestment. If one company is able to dominate the market and eliminate competition. Because this is a negative impact, therefore this cannot be a part of our answer. Disinvestment can be used to inflate government surplus in the short run while reducing capability to generate surplus in the long run. Yes, it does. In, uh, disinvestment results in directly results in increasing government surplus or reducing fiscal deficit. But at the same time, if that disinvestment money is used for consumption by the government, then it is not contributing towards further structural transformation in the economy and therefore it may or it may not increase the capacity of creating surplus in the future. So this again is not uh, a not a negative point, it is a negative point. This investment can be used to limit government functioning to welfare activities for which it is elected by the people. It is not a negative point, it is certainly one of the reasons why disinvestment has been carried out. So although on the face of it, it looks like a negative point, but it is a positive point. And as the Prime Minister has also said, minimum government, maximum governance. Minimum government, maximum governance is also reinforced by this point. The fourth one is this investment can be used to make sick units more professional and profitable in the future. This certainly is a positive point, therefore not a negative point. So the answer to this question is C, only 3 and 4 are not negative impacts. Let's come to the next question. Which of the following can be an advantage of a farmer producer organization? I hope you have read about FPOs, very important for the upcoming NABARD examination, specifically phase 2. FPOs can give more bargaining power to the member farmers. Does it? Yes, it does. FPOs can enhance earnings of member farmers. Yes, it does enhance earnings of member farmers. I have explained all these things in detail in the monthly PDF of March ESI section. FPOs find it easier than individual farmers to access financial services. Yes, a direct impact of farmer producer organizations because of higher bargaining power. FPOs are allowed to bypass APMC rules and send directly to the consumer. Does FPO allow or are FPOs allowed to bypass the APMC rules altogether and sell directly to the consumer? As on today, they are not allowed. Because is APMC is a state subject, agriculture is a state subject and therefore APMC comes under the state's responsibility. So not all the states have removed APMCs and therefore FPOs around the country are still not allowed to sell directly to the consumer. Therefore, 1, 2 and 3 are the advantages and the fourth one is not an advantage. That's all for today's current affairs. I hope you liked it. Tomorrow, we will be discussing some more current affairs questions which are going to hold a lot of importance for the upcoming RBI as well as NABAT examination. All the very best.